a lot of time people get kicked out of the university as well and if you mm. have a referral uh, like some people uh, i know that if they were graduating they actually refer their juniors who mm. could get a ta immediately in the first semester don't go by yourself in the evening um, oh, yes. like if it is dark like uh, stay in the large groups or like people will not try to mess with you versus if you are like alone you are like an easy target for someone so but like the big tech companies they definitely have to apply through the normal process uh, if mm. you apply via referral that would be great like mm. a lot of people at georgia tech they applied uh, to meta i remember and a lot of people got placed in meta how many from your batch you feel like have gotten internships and then full time jobs uh so majority of the people started applying in the first semester so like mm. i think 50% of the people I had internships in the first semester itself What? which is a huge number because definitely uh, the competition in US especially is very high I think it's very rare someone starts preparing from first year of engineering for masters <laughs> and they think that having a higher GRE score is going to get them a good university but that's not really true so wait out of 11 you only got two rejects and nine admits yeah yeah wow Thank you Devashree for doing this. Again, it means a lot. I feel like it's a fan moment for me. I know you say that it is fan moment for you, but for me as well because I found you on Instagram and I was like, "Oh, this is amazing. I'll put for people who don't know you, I'll put your Instagram there so maybe they get to know you." But before we get into the conversation, maybe you can do like a quick intro, where are you from? What do you do and fun stuff? Yes. Uh thank you so much actually for calling me on this podcast. I'm really very excited. to talk to you uh, i've actually been watching your videos since uh, 2018 2019 uh, the when i actually start uh, thought of applying for a masters degree i started watching your videos uh, and they were very 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 helpful so thank you so much for that <laughs> thank you uh, yeah yeah coming to my intro so uh, my name is devashree i am from pune india and i've done my bachelor's in computer engineering uh, from mit pune and uh, i have two years of work experience in india and post that i completed my masters degree from georgia tech in uh, computer science again and i graduated last year in december 2022 so mm. uh, yeah since then uh, i have been uh, working as a software engineer in walmart for for a year i think yes Very good. Yes, nice. Yeah, we'll get to your Walmart journey as well, and we're we're gonna do like a two separate video: your job search and Walmart journey. This is purely about your Georgia Tech and like uh, fun stuff about Georgia Tech. So obviously, I'm gonna bring you back to the time and like 2019 or 2018, whenever you started thinking about masters. Like, why did you in the first place? Like, you had a job, uh, and it's like, why did you start thinking? I was like, I want to do masters, and or I want to go to United States in first place. Oh, uh, right. So actually, it was quite uh, before my job. So it was, uh, I think, around twelfth grade, or when I just began my engineering in the first year. So uh, that was the time when I when I got to know from several of my seniors that you know a lot of people started going for a master's degree, especially in the U.S. for the tech industry, uh, mm. most prominently. So uh, that's when I thought uh, that okay, uh, let's research about that topic. And uh, so when I researched, I realized that the kind of placements that uh, came to my university, especially a tier three university, were not that great. uh even uh, from a tech perspective like the scope of learning as well as uh, from a, a pay scale perspective both i felt that it was a, a relatively not as good as maybe the tier 1 uh, universities in india mm. so that was the mm. initial starting point uh, where that thought uh, began in my head but when i actually uh, started doing my engineering uh, i got a chance once to um, publish a research paper at iit bombay so mm. uh, i actually got a chance to visit the campus when mm. that happened i realized the level of research work and projects that happened there uh the exposure they have we don't have and yeah. that's when i really got intrigued that i really want to do a masters degree for that exposure i think mm. both personally and personally too because i've never stepped out of the house uh, before my masters mm. degree so i was always living in india with my parents so mm. uh, yeah i just thought that it would be it would give me a, like a really good exposure professionally and personally both Yeah. Nice. I love it. I love the story. Uh for me, you know, it was different. I I feel like my I, 
I come from lower middle class family, so I didn't have the luxury to even think that uh, I could afford something like that. So, but my best friend was going, and he's like, "You should go too." <laughs> and, and so that's kind of how it started. But uh, of of course, we are not talking about my story. But so let's say you decided you are like, "Okay, I want to do this." Uh, when did you like? What was what are the things that you started doing after that decision has been made? And and like, what are the steps did you took like? to start preparing for it uh right so actually i firstly i contacted several seniors and uh, a cousin of mine actually uh, an immediate cousin she was also uh, she was elder to me and she was preparing back then for a masters mm. when i was in first year or second year of engineering so mm. uh, she was a good uh, support for me because i could actually uh, get the knowledge and the resources through her that um, so she told me that a lot of things are uh, very important uh, first was our a good gpa so that was one thing that i thought that at least i should maintain a 9 and above gpa to be on the safer side that at least i don't i qualify for all the universities that i'm applying because definitely uh, the competition in us especially is very high so mm. uh, that was one priority that i consistently maintained because i feel that uh, universities also look at the consistency that you have throughout the four years and not yeah. just the bachelor the final year that you uh, score uh, so that was one thing that i uh, consistently did second i uh, was uh, making good projects so uh, picking actually mm. choosing good uh, topics for the project something that is very unique not been done much uh, before so uh, not the typical database or sql type of projects that people do uh, yeah. something unique so that maybe i can publish research papers on that uh, because if it is a unique topic it will be a unique contribution that might get accepted to mm. uh, you know conferences like ieee which are maybe known worldwide so that might create a good impact in the resume so and eventually that happened so uh, i had research papers as well so uh, projects and research work uh, definitely i focused especially starting third year and fourth year for sure uh, mm. secondly i think during my time i did not have like much uh, work experience uh, from a internship perspective like uh, now i see people doing internship every other semester but yes. then like i had just one internship uh, at the end of my third year that was mm. the only allowed internship uh, period that we used to get from our college so i thought that maybe i'm lacking work experience a little bit because um, of course us is a very practical oriented uh, curriculum yeah it's very hands on yeah yes so i just yeah. thought that maybe i don't have that much exposure in that uh, domain so i should definitely mm. uh, have some work experience maybe that might help me uh, in finding better jobs or at least shortlisting calls i would get so uh, that was one reason i decided that i should have work experience for a year but because of covid uh, that eventually i had to defer it mm. so, mm. i have to say this uh, i actually never I I think it's very rare someone starts preparing from first year of engineering for masters so so you are so like so thought out and so intentional about like every single step that you took like it, in, including maintaining the GPA and the projects because you knew that the projects are somehow going to help you with the research and and showcase your skills and work experience so I love that. I I wish and I hope that after watching this people are also inspired that don't just do it because I, what everyone else is like you know may maybe think more intentionally like how to think you obviously had a long term tunnel vision so that was that it, it tells me from your answer so that's awesome. Now like you made the decision you've been preparing uh, what were did you have like any fear that you know what if this doesn't work out like what like did you have doubt i'm curious if you did have any doubts or fears actually i had a lot of fears uh, because uh, i knew the competition that uh, people talk about here is mm. uh, completely on the next level so a lot of my seniors had also told me that uh, it's very difficult to get good internships and jobs uh, mm. here especially if you're coming from a tier 3 university where you you are not very well prepared Uh, mm. for it because you've not given so many interviews back to back you've not uh, witnessed that placement scenario up to that level because i mm. think uh, in our university we had placements once in a month companies coming once in a month and mm. uh, i know some people told me that uh, iits have uh, placements like one in a complete week they have all their placements and parallelly they're giving interviews 
so uh, i had never uh, gone through so much stress i was always as you said like very well prepared beforehand but i did not that's why i didn't know how to handle stress like a lot of stress uh, and yeah. under pressure and mm. excel under pressure i definitely didn't know that and mm. uh, that was one skill that i actually learned after coming to the us so i was very mm. scared about that that i think i won't be able to cope up and i had never lived outside my house so that was one thing that i was really worried that you know uh, personally how would i be able to manage independently uh, in terms of you know dealing with people especially uh, cooking and daily habits are fine but dealing with people is another game that yes. you learn when you experience it so that was one yeah. thing that was really worried the roommate a roommate oh, yeah. scenario like i've talked about it in my videos many times it's like a big boss situation happens uh, and um yeah so dealing with that especially and then um, i think even the education system is so different here uh, like it's um, every week i was doing assignments uh, especially like and assignments is not like just copy paste here so it's you have to like really code so yeah. so yeah i i know and at the end of the podcast i'm probably going to ask you like how did those fear transform because obviously now you are more confident and how you face them through so we'll stay tuned for that but let's walk people through like uh what entrance exam i mean assuming you did gre toefl but like what was your overall profile and then we'll talk about like what universities you applied to uh right so i gave my gre i got a score of 318 so um and a toefl i had 107 so i think 100 was the cut off for most universities so i just cleared the cut off for mm-hmm. uh, both exams i did think of gi- uh, giving my gre again for the verbal score but then i realized that okay that is actually not that important uh because a gre and tofel scores are like elimination criteria they are never selection criteria so if your profile is good enough i think it's mm. you'll be you'll be fine so i didn't think that wait, i wait 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 let's yeah. say this again i love this because gre score is not a selection but it's an elimination cri- criteria meaning yeah. if they have a uh, minimum of 150 and if you cross that you're good um that's that's what like i i love that yeah, i i think many people are so focused that i need to have 330 plus and they think that having a higher gre score is going to get them a good university but that's not really true and and that was actually my first video which i made is like low cuz having a low gre score and getting admits i did i, I did that so uh, thank you for saying that yeah right yeah so 318 gre toefl roughly about i think you said about 100, 100 or so 107 and then Two years of uh, startup work experience as a software engineer, and and then you started applying. Uh, timeline wise, you chose October-ish because uh, I think one of the things we were talking as well, like uh, it, it is important to apply early because there are a lot of like scholarship plus also they give preference to people who apply early uh, then people who wait until like February March, which is the dead some some universities have early deadline, but. how many universities did you apply to and how many rejects ad- admits did you get uh so i applied to 11 that was a, a quite a huge What? number <laughs> uh, yes uh, yeah so that i didn't want to you know have the uh, i have a regret that i did not try for the mm. at most ambitious universities and because i was working for 2 years i had earned some amount that okay i'm using my amount so i'm i'm not uh, i'm guilt free that i'm not using my parents money yeah yeah so did you have way, any ex- application waiver for any of them uh, or no i think for arizona state university um i had joined a consultancy back then so they had yeah. a tie up with the university Achha. so okay. that's so the only reason yeah right got it so which so give us the like do you remember all the 10 or 11 or no uh, yeah uh, it was uh, georgia tech uh, ucsd uh, usc um, tamu uh, umass amherst uh, university of buffalo uh, mm. stony brooks uh, i think arizona state university uh, purdue and columbia i got rejects from purdue and columbia <laughs> nice okay <laughs> so wait out of 11 you only got two rejects and nine admits yeah yeah wow I think that's probably even more tough than having one admit because you decision is already made for you but yes. now you have nine universities that you applied and you got it so walk me through the process of first like how did you choose these 11 and like and then out of those nine admits how did you choose like you know I'm going to go with Georgia Tech right 
Uh, so I think, as I mentioned, uh, as uh, my um, uh, GPA was uh, consistently about nine, I thought that maybe I can take the risk of applying for more ambitious universities because mm. uh, and then I had built my profile also in a similar manner. So I thought that why not take a risk of applying to more ambitious if I don't get in, it's fine, but uh, I didn't want the regret. So that was the reason I chose uh, more uh, ambitious universities. Uh, just I think too safe and uh, too moderate and most were like ambitious universities in my list mm, so mm. Uh, that was the proportion of the generally people apply for more <laughs> uh, safe and uh, yeah uh, yeah but, couple and, they they usually have like couple of ambitious and like and then more moderate and then couple yeah. of safe because they know like I'm definitely getting that so uh, right. yeah yours was like obviously reverse uh, because you had most ambitious universities which is which is great like you made it so um, but like and then how Sorry, I, I cut you off, but like, how did you think about choosing shortlisting out of 5,000 new universities? These are the nine I'm going to choose or 11 I'm going to choose. Uh, so actually, I went through the curriculum of all the universities. So I wanted to do a specialization mm. in machine learning. That was one okay. thing. So there were mm. some universities that are also good for computer science, but some are not that good for machine learning, maybe the courses mm. that I was looking for. So that was the reason that was the first important criteria that uh, I had kept in mind. Second was definitely the tuition fee. So mm. if the university has a lower tuition fee, then definitely I'll go ahead. If the university does not have, then uh, definitely it should have some kind of waiver, like in the form of RA or TA, that they should mm. uh, waive off the tuition. Uh, and also the third thing was the batch size. I feel uh, if the mm. batch size is more, you don't find a RA or a TA, even uh, though there are so many opportunities because uh, the competition is also equally high. Also, yeah. you won't find on-campus jobs at uh, certain uh, times because of the competition and the batch size. So even yeah, even like a to, UTD yeah. or NU Boston, I, oh, I was yes. in there. There's like 500 students. I was, I was yeah. like, what is going on over here? My right. batch was like 20 Indian students max. Uh, I mean, now we have like maybe 50, but uh, 500 is crazy. Yeah, uh, and and I think the other thing, the disadvantage is is also that what I heard from all these students who had such massive batch size is that they were not able to even get the courses, sign up for the courses because uh, everyone were to have to wake up at four in the morning or five in the morning so that they can hit refresh so that they can select the course they want for the semester. I'm like, this is like being miserable, like you're paying $70,000 and yet you didn't get to choose what you want to study. So it's horrible. But Sorry, I cut you off again. But yes, keep going. Um, so no, first I was... I agree with your point. Uh, yeah. Also the coursework, yes, for sure. I think even I've struggled for that. Uh, I mm. think Georgia Tech has a batch size of around uh, 80, mm. uh, 80, 90. Okay. So yeah. it's uh, somewhere in the middle, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, yeah the coursework thing we also witnessed for sure. Uh, waking up at 6 a.m. and uh, yeah, <laughs> using the course. And, sure. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so okay, you were going through the list. So you first, yeah. you said curriculum. Um, then you said uh, low tuition fees. Uh, mm -hmm. And if they don't have to low tuition fees, then you would look for like, do they have RATA? And if they have, do they give tuition fees waived off? Right. And then you went for bad size. Were there any other criteria? Uh, so in my case, uh, even the living expenses are important, I feel. But mm -hmm. uh, for my case, I thought that uh, if I choose Georgia Tech, uh, as the tuition is getting waived off, they also pay a stipend. So that is good enough for the living expenses. So mm. then both are covered. So definitely mm. living expense is also an important criteria. But in my case, I had thought that and that's the reason I chose uh, Georgia Tech. But mm. uh, I think um, a lot of people go to Cal universities in California, but the California living expenses are really high. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, so if the tuition is also high, then in that case, it will be a worse situation, I feel. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think even ranking was one important aspect. Uh, so ranking uh, in terms of the fact that if higher the ranking, the university is more selective. So mm. definitely the crowd that you'll get at the university will be more uh, selected and carefully shortlisted. So I think you'll mm. surround yourself with like smarter people. So it will help in your growth for sure. So ranking is important for that and not for, uh, you know, getting getting a job. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I think that is a big stigma. We will talk through more as well. But uh, people think that brand and ranking, like if they go to Georgia Tech, they there's a guarantee that I'm going to get a job. That's that's really not true. Uh, I mean, you can correct people. But, <laughs> but but what you said was very interesting. And I think a lot of people should take a note of that, that having a people sur pe surrounding yourself with the people who are smarter than you or like they have a unique perspective that helps you grow personally and overall that helps you get the job sooner because your right. overall mindset has grown as well yeah that yeah. really helped me because i think when i entered in the first semester uh people had already applied for uh jobs <laughs> and internships and uh, uh, in july end itself so we came in August wow. here and yeah. yeah, because a lot of companies, I think like Salesforce, they cut their uh, interview yes. process around by September. Yeah, it's quite and, early. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, people had applied. A lot of people actually had a uh, job interviews uh, lined interview calls and internships, offer letters uh, by September end or October first week. So that was quite early. But of course, I used to get mm. intimidated by that. But that's yeah. the reason I actually started applying very early myself. Mm. So, yeah, that helps. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I definitely want to talk through that. Um, so yeah. yeah. And did you um, ever consider like weather liveliness or anything like that? Or was um, that part of your short, yes, short list? I've actually seen people consider that. So weather I feel is important because definitely if it's very depressing, then sometimes it feels more <laughs> isolating. That can yeah. be a factor. I mean, in my case, Atlanta uh, is, is uh, definitely cold, but not very, it does not have extremes. So that's fine. Mm. But mm. Uh, I've seen like, I've heard stories from my friends uh, who were at uh, Buffalo or maybe Rochester. Who have yeah, really, RIT. You know, mm. Yeah, and especially during the COVID time, they were really very isolated and they felt very depressed. So mm. that's why I think that weather is also important. If it is an important criteria for you, you should definitely mm. check that as well. Mm. And uh, yeah, another thing is liveliness. I think a, a lot of people go to NYU for the uh, New York uh, City vibe. And uh, so I, I have a lot of friends who go to NYU. Uh, no doubt it's a good university, but uh, the tuition is quite expensive. And, yes. uh, and the living as well is expensive. So if you have yeah. this combination without any waiver, then I feel mm. that it can be, it's, it's your call if you have the money then. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, I was in NY. I visited NYU like a couple months ago. I made a video on this. I was shocked. I, I mean, after listening to their answers, I'm like, why Why are people going to this university? <laughs> because I don't get it. Uh, first, the renting situation is, I mean, I don't know how it is in Atlanta, but in, in New York, first of all, you it's very hard to find a living like an apartment. Uh, so most people try to go outside New York, like New Jersey or something like that. But if you do end up finding it, you have to show the proof that you make the rent into 40 times the income if you're working. If you don't, then you have to show 80 times. So now obviously you're not going to have that income. So you have to find a guarantor. You can have one or two guarantors, which shows that. And it's just like such a hassle after that, like horror stories about New York. And I'm like, wow, I, I just don't get why people <laughs> go, go there. Right. But I think people do go at the end. I asked them, like, was it worth it for them? And everyone said yes. And they would do it again because of the New York lifestyle. Uh, they, the life, the city helped them grow a lot and made them stronger. So that's that was like th that like being in the subways and all of that like that mm -hmm. helped them give that motivation and inspiration i'm like i, I can find inspiration for less way less money than that hundred thousand dollar <laughs> but it's okay. okay so that reminds me uh, i wasn't this wasn't plan of me asking you uh did you take loan yes so i had sanctioned uh, a loan and in the first semester uh, i did not get a ta so mm. in the first semester, I used my savings that whatever I had, and I used eight and a half lakhs of loan, uh, mm. which includes uh, the tuition and the living for the first semester. In the second semester and the third semester, I got a TA. So, so uh, yeah, because of and the then TA, base, yes. Mm. So I did not uh, take any loan thereafter. Yeah. Got it. So, and we'll talk about TA and RA. And I was assuming based on your answer that because of TA and RA, you didn't have to, like tuition fees was waived off and yeah. you probably was making money which covered the living expenses yes. uh, and obviously you were at Walmart which means you made money and you paid off the loan so you graduated with zero dollar debt is yes. that 
accurate yes. oh, yes. nice that is so awesome that's such a good feeling to like have no worries every single money you make is going to be yours and you don't have to like worry about it's savings investing and whatever you you want to do next so that, right. that's such a great feeling cool let's track back uh, nine admits obviously and all of them are ambitious admit uh, your profile is strong but i think there's some secret sauce which uh, you had, <laughs> uh, which I'm assuming is uh, your statement of purpose um, and your like overall profile that you sent it, which impressed them, the university. So how did you like structure it? And is my assumption right that it was your statement of purpose and overall profile? Like Because having a good profile doesn't really mean that you will get an admit, but how you present it is what is going to like you know it's same in resume like people could have a good uh, skill set but if they don't present it they might not get selected uh, yeah. so what what are your thoughts oh yes i think it was the sop for sure because uh, um, what people do is people write a very generic sop which is not uh, and they what they do is they uh, translate their resume into words and into an essay and they write the sop uh, hmm. uh, I reviewed like a lot of SOPs for my juniors and that's when I realized that that it's a literal translation of their resume. But uh, the thing is that the resume already has the facts that you've already done. That is whatever you've hmm. done is already there. The university hmm. wants something extra. So they want, they're looking for a story behind everything that you've done in the resume. So they're looking hmm. for the why in the SOP that why you did it, what was your motivation and what were the learnings that you're carrying forward because those learnings will actually help you in uh, your master's journey. So they're looking for a good student uh, here. And um, so I think that's what people miss out. They don't write learnings in their uh, SOP throughout their journey. And their mm. the SOP does not have a storyline uh, format. So I mm. think that has to, it, it has to have a storyline. Yeah. yeah. So can we can we get like a five minute of a masterclass uh, possibly that I am applying? Uh, I have the same profile as you um, and I don't know, like, OK, now I have a blank document. How do I start thinking about like what's how would you coach me if I were to write this um, or how would you write yourself if I, I were to write it? Uh, so initially I'll start with I'll just start with a paragraph by paragraph. Um, OK. Over. Yeah. So maybe the first paragraph can be uh, people again write very generic internet knowledge of why technology is important, how it's changing, how AI is involved, mm. all of that. That they already know. It's all there on Google and Chat GPT. You don't need to tell them all of those facts. <laughs> so yeah. what is important is I feel that they want to know your story, the reason mm. what motivated you to pursue a bachelor's degree in their in that field, what persuaded you to actually pursue a master's degree in that field. And mm. so it has to be an interesting story. It can't be a very simple uh, one liner uh, that my parents motivated me, but it has to be like a story. So it it will be intriguing for the reader and then they'll read through the entire SOP. So because mm. I see the universities read like have 10,000 applications every year, you can't expect them to read your SOP. They generally skim through the SOPs. So if it's not yeah. interesting, they'll move on to the other SOP. So mm. uh, writing a story is very important and it has to be very personal and authentic, I feel, because that will also help you escape plagiarism. Like if you write mm. general stuff, again, that can be plagiarized very easily. Uh, but yeah. if you write something that is very personal to you, uh, yeah, I think you can. Escape yeah, so that. let me take a guess over here. Um, so so obviously the first paragraph is a hook. Uh, is at least That's what it sounds like it, right? And so in your case, because you mentioned about this story in your intro that, you know, you went to IIT and you realized like this exposure, like this could be a story which sparked the thought of that you want this exposure of doing right. masters. And that's like, that's what intrigued you to do masters. And now you go into like, is that like, Yes, uh, that thinking. was a story that I had written for sure. And uh, I added another uh, layer to it that I actually, uh, what persuaded me for a bachelor's degree, like after school in computer mm. engineering. So I started with that, that what, uh, in, like first it uh, kind of sparked an interest in software programming. Mm. So mm. I think my story was that I used to watch Harry Potter movies a lot. I, I was a, a fan and they have a concept of invisibility cloak uh, mm. in the movie. And mm -hmm. um, I made a project uh, back in school when uh, I developed an invisibility cloak using my programming skills. 
so that's when i realized that this is very interesting uh, for a school going kid this like seemed very interesting i used to show my friends that you know i made this project so that's when i realized that oh this is this is so cool and yeah. so at that age at the age of 13 or 14 um, i thought that okay why not take up computer engineering or software engineering as my career preference so mm. that's when i decided that post 12th i'll do that yeah sorry i'm i'm like quizzing you and putting you on spotlight <laughs> and it wasn't even part of this whole thing but i i loved it so so first paragraph again is the hook then do they do you follow up how do you follow up the rest of the paragraphs Uh, right. Is so there like first, a standard length that uh, you should have thousand words or fifteen hundred words or something like that? So uh, it's around a uh, thousand to twelve hundred. So uh, hmm. mine was around eleven fifty or twelve hundred, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, so actually, it will be di- it will differ for different universities because some universities want a one page uh, SOP. So Purdue was one university that wanted one page, and hmm. that was even more tricky because you have to cut down a lot of things. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, coming to the second paragraph, I feel uh, you need to write about your undergrad uh, journey, uh, about uh, the kind of courses that you took. Uh, again, the minor projects that you did, one or two, not much. But the most important thing again is the learnings that you learned through every project. Maybe technical learnings, and I think people often forget soft skill learnings, which are mm. equally important for a master's program. so they want to know uh, why did you take up that course what was the learning from the project that you did and mm-hmm. how will that contribute towards the masters program or in life in general so uh, that is very important in the second paragraph and i think i dedicated my third paragraph the entire paragraph for my major project uh, mm-hmm. because i thought that that was a highlight of the application so which is the uh, final project of bachelors yes bachelors yes okay gotcha okay yes. got it and uh, i also wrote about the research work that i did uh, for mm. that project and mm. then again if you have other more uh, research papers you can definitely write about that, that too but mm. uh, what people write about in the research paper paragraph i've seen is again they don't mention learnings they've just list down the publications like they've mentioned in the resume and uh, the most important thing in research is the, your unique contribution because a lot of existing work already exists and you just contribute a little bit of feature because of which it gets accepted into a publication so it's very important to emphasize on your personal contribution how did you come up with it what were the challenges so the entire journey behind that it's very important and the challenges that i think you have just one paragraph to write that entire thing mm. so crisp mm. words yeah very crisp and clear but uh, yet i think it has to be um, something that is intriguing very interesting to read mm. so, yeah, yeah. yeah and so that's third paragraph and then is the fourth is the closing or is it uh, why they are applying to the university uh so i think in a two page uh, sop definitely um i would say fourth would be about volunteer work or extracurricular activities if you have done any during your uh, college if mm. it is a one page sop uh, then in that case i think you'll have to adjust a little bit you can cut down your minor projects you can just write about your final year project the research mm. work and then mm. you can write about your work experience just in case you have any so mm. again uh, internships and uh, if you have more work experience then you can cut down on more of your internship and uh, projects as well and you can mention more of the work experience but mm. uh, what the universities are looking at is not a good working professional they are looking at a good student so mm. again for the working professional journey also it's very important to highlight your learnings that you mm. will take forward with you because mm. uh, there's a difference between a working professional and a good student and yeah. in, in the us the mentality is that people do masters as a stepping stone for research and for phd and not as a mm. stepping stone for a job which mm. we think it is but it's not actually so yeah. it's very important to give the universities what they want mm. i love it yes i love this yeah yeah so do you ever mention anything related to like uh why you are choosing them as a university or that yes. doesn't come yeah okay no, so that would be the last paragraph uh, okay so in the one page and in the two page i think uh, there will be one more paragraph for internship if you want if you have space then you mm. can definitely add more about uh, internship work experience but yeah the university will be the last paragraph and i think that is that and the first paragraph i feel are the most important paragraphs uh mm. because um the at the end you need the reader to again feel very refreshed and convinced that you are the right choice for the university so mm. uh i think it has to be very specific to every different university for sure 
and mm. uh, what people write again is a very generic last paragraph they uh, just praise the uh, it's a high rank university the professors are great the curriculum is great and that's why but that is again uh, the facts that they know so yeah. Uh, yeah here i think what i did is i went on uh, the website i checked all the professors and for mm. every professor i checked the google scholar account that they have and mm. i tried to link their research work with my existing projects or research work that's when you can actually wow. link the two and if you link then it sounds more authentic that okay now you want to contribute towards the professor's research and that's mm. why you want to uh, you know take their or class or you want to learn yeah exactly yes. yep yes. yeah yeah so it has to be very authentic and personalized people mm. just write very generic things uh that mm. is not sufficient for a good university mm. i love this thank you i feel like this is this is such a good uh like i could like just release this video as as is and how to write a good sops because it, it was so good uh and i like another tip i would add as a because i write scripts for my videos and all of that sometimes looking at the blank uh screen it's to daunting because you don't know what you what you want to do so a lot of time i just brain dump what can i talk about so i i'll just write down all my thoughts and then once you have it you can restructure it and then you can go through the elimination process uh, is that what you do uh, or yes. like what? yes actually yeah. so when i wrote my sop it was like a 3 4 page sop and then <laughs> yeah. because i wrote everything that came to my mind and then right. i cut it down i prioritized i yeah. got it reviewed from a few seniors or any friends and yeah. that's when yeah that happened yes yes exactly Nah, that this is awesome. I'm so glad uh, you talked through this because again, this was I learned a lot. So I hope uh, people who are watching it, they are learning it. I know it's 40 minutes already, <laughs> but uh, I expected this. This is what I was telling Devshree. Like, I think this might go like an hour long because uh, I I know you have such a wealth of knowledge. So all right, cool. So um, SOPs, LORs, transcript. You did the applications. Now uh, you. picked georgia tech among your nine admits uh, yeah. was there a specific reason that you chose georgia tech among those nine or um, what was like why did you pick that uh, so uh, i think first thing was that georgia tech among the admits that i had that was the most ambitious university among those mm. so it was mm. highly ranked so i knew that the uh, the crowd that i would meet there would be excellent and that's what happened i think all my roommates were like from nit or bits or iit so it was <laughs> nice. uh, really yeah it was a um, great experience for sure uh, and uh, second again i knew that uh, for a tier ra they do have tuition waivers so mm. uh, that was the reason that despite it having a huge i20 amount i thought that a ta or ra and getting a tier or ra in georgia tech is relatively possible uh it can't mm. it's not easy but it is not impossible it is possible because the batch mm. size is also limited and they mm. have a lot of uh, availability uh, because uh, you have you can go you can ta for a class for an undergrad course as well right so yes. definitely yeah. uh, they have a lot of opportunities mm. but you have to be proactive you need to know uh, which professor to mail and beforehand mm. so i mm. think i did not know that so in the first semester i mailed very late after reaching uh, atlanta but i was very mm. late already people had mailed before mm. coming to the us coming to united states yes. yeah we'll talk about that um so three things that you mentioned and i want to touch on that f- f- i20 uh, w- what was what is georgia tech's i20 amount uh, so it was 47000 uh, back then so around 35 for a year for a year yes 9 months yes okay Okay, gotcha. And your course is two years, so or three semesters, uh, roughly. So, uh, yeah. So actually, Georgia Tech is they uh, a lot of people can complete in one and a half years because mm-hmm. they force you to take four courses compulsory in the first semester if you don't have a TA. So in every mm-hmm. semester, you have to take four courses if you don't have any TA or RA. If you have mm-hmm. one, then you can drop one course and take three. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that's why I had to take four courses in the first semester. Wow! And, and how yeah. how uh, what's the credit limit? Uh, like one course is how many units? Is uh, it four? Three credits and thirty credits, credits okay. in total. So that's gotcha. the reason it can be completed in one and a half years. But mm. I think because of the recession, a lot of people extended, so they 
started taking a lot of courses from electives and not from their uh, actual special core courses yeah yes, yes. yeah so yeah gotcha okay okay so that was one um so roughly sounds like 47 i'm assuming some of that was living expenses so let's say 35 and 35 70000 yeah. total total amount um and uh, and then you mentioned like your roommates were from nit iit bits yeah. i if i was at your place i would feel like solid imposter syndrome and i would feel like um, I, i would like go into my room and start crying because i was like i feel like i do not belong here everyone is so ahead of me i i like i would this would crush me but you seem to have this attitude that i'm going to grow from these people so so uh, uh, so uh, actually did, i had that attitude before coming to the us for sure uh but when i actually lived that yes i had imposter syndrome as well i used to cry in my room as well because <laughs> i was far behind them like everybody like i i had done lead code for 6 months before coming for the first time mm. and mm. despite them not preparing a lead code they already knew it because for 4 years of their engineering they had already done competitive programming or any for that matter any tech stack as well they already knew it the mm. they used to solve assignments in a day or two days and i used to take like an entire week to solve the same assignment so mm. definitely it yeah it it did have a i felt very um um i i don't know the feeling i can't express the feeling it, it was <laughs> yeah very... i know i know right yeah it's it's like you almost start to feel like like you don't have anything like you you can't even match their skill set and you start to devalue yourself so much and then that puts you in that fro- frozen zone that you just don't know what to do uh, yes. because you you look at them and you're like wow they already have an internship they have their resume ready <laughs> they they have interviews lined up i am like what am i doing <laughs> so so but i i think that's where the beauty of it like you le- need to look at the silver lining where you look at this and hopefully they are also encouraging roommates and friends that they help you uh, also you know pick up the pace and and start like now you know okay if they can do it i can do it as well and you can keep keep up the thing but yes um and then let's just talk about tara because i know we've mentioned it multiple times um so you got it but not in the first semester and this is the mistake you kind of mentioned is that you did not email the professor before coming yes. why should people email let's let's even address that because i think not a lot of people even know this that they could and they should right. they are in the honeymoon phase that they got the admit they got the visa and they are like chill out like you know going to goa or whatever better i don't know what right. people do but <laughs> they are like chilling uh, nicely versus right. people who are like actually scoring tara so that their entire tuition fees are waived off so right. talk me walk me through like why they should email and like how's the process of getting the tara so uh, i think initially why they should email is because of course of, because of the competition again that everyone wants those uh, set of uh, i think there are very limited uh, seats that they have but everyone mm-hmm. wants them and at the same time i think you also want to ta a course which you understand you at least mm-hmm. have a basic understanding of that course because sometimes mm-hmm. for some courses they do take interviews for the ta position like mm-hmm. i was interviewed for the ta position that i mm-hmm. uh, eventually i i ta for high performance computer architecture so it was one of the core courses uh, mm-hmm. and that's why uh, they did interview me so i think for the interview also you need to prepare yourself yeah and yeah. definitely uh, actually can we yeah. take a step back what what do ta and ra Uh, stand for and what do they do uh, let's like yeah. explain the audience for those who might not know this i know most people might but let's just do quick like what do they do so uh, it is teaching assistantship and research assistantship so generally mm. ta has uh, lesser credits uh, ra might have more credits if uh, the research is a heavy research work then it can actually replace two courses so in ta it involves uh, firstly setting up assignment questions uh, for students wow yes. okay Uh, That's different courses, from yes. my universities, but they yeah, keep going. Yes. So setting up uh, assignment courses, uh, sorry, setting up assignment questions, uh, grading, of course, uh, conducting a TA RA session, uh, sorry, TA um, uh, the hours that they have, the um, yeah, like uh, office hours. Know. Yes, office hours. So yeah. uh, the, uh, conducting office hours. So you definitely every day there will be two TAs who will have like one one hour 
uh, and mm. you have to really answer the doubts of the um, students <laughs> so that's yeah. why you need to know the course really well before applying right. because yeah. uh, if you don't mm. then you won't be able to help yeah. and then yeah, and, the and for those of you who don't know this there's, there's a beautiful thing called office hours with ta but then also with professors uh, we don't have that concept in india at least it didn't have in my universities mm. um, where so let's say devshri is a ta for data structure course i have and there's an assignment on data structure on binary search algorithm for example um i am lost i have no idea how to solve this i could go to devshri and i was like i'm stuck i please help me figure it out so devshri will guide me coach me how to solve and programming assignment and most people don't take advantage of this so you should take one advantage of it because that's what they are there for but in in most universities you can also do the same with professors as well you can go to professors and ask questions and professors are your best friends please like just uh, like make a tattoo of this but i, I should just make a tattoo most people are so hesitant to even reach out and talk to professors I, i'm still friends with my professors but regardless i'm going off track so that yeah. is what uh, she meant by when she have to conduct office hours so people will come to her and ask questions and yeah. if she doesn't know then she's like i she she have to know <laughs> so yeah. yeah so so that's what you do as a ta and yeah. um, and then because you have a ta in ga uh, georgia tech you had your tuition fees waived off yeah. um and so for certain position you had to interview so um so tas are usually for professors who are i mean obviously busy because you know they are doing their work and they want teaching assist assistant in teaching so that's why it's teaching assistant and that's why they she comes in now to apply uh, it's not like as simple as some like professors a job opening most people are very proactive in this and they email it so let's like how did you get it and uh, why should people email before coming to united states or before even they start their program uh right again because uh, the seats are limited so what uh, i thought that people had is a strong alumni network at georgia mm. tech in my case mm. which i didn't mm. have like a lot of people mm. from my university don't go to georgia tech so if you have mm. a strong alumni network they will tell you because not all uh, professors are looking for tas there mm. are very limited uh, availabilities every semester that come up because people graduate and then that's how the availabilities come up and also some courses require more tas some courses require comparatively less tas depending upon mm. the uh, batch strength of that specific course so you need to mm. understand which course to apply to what professor who to mail and i think your seniors can really guide you very well uh, in that process so yeah. uh, and that you need to do beforehand yes for sure because in the first semester they don't know anything about you you don't have like a, a gpa to uh, tell your professor that this is my first semester gpa these are my projects that i did uh, you don't have you're a blank slate for the professor so that's when uh, definitely you need to apply proactively and if you mm. have a referral uh, like some people uh, i know that if they were graduating they actually referred their juniors who mm. would get a ta immediately mm. in the first semester so yeah. referral works in that case as well yeah Yes, uh, hundred percent. I'm gonna double down on this. Um, so here's my story. I, uh, I when when I was coming, um, I reached out to some of my seniors and asked them, like, you know, which like what do they do on campus? How do they get an on campus job, etc. And like because I was friends with them, and one of the senior who was graduating, so he said, "Hey, I'm graduating and I'm gonna be leaving, but I can tell." the professor to hire you because i know you and the referrals work in united states because that senior is putting the word for me that hey mm -hmm. i'm leaving but i have a friend who will be a good fit for you know this position you might want to consider and so that's exactly why you should first reach out to seniors and get to okay. know because this is how you will know that who is hiring and who's not hiring and if they are leaving then you also get this ad ad added advantage right. anyway in your case um you came to united states then you applied for it yes. uh, did they what questions did they ask you i'm curious now uh actually technical questions uh mm. specific to the course uh, but they also asked me a little bit of soft skills they wanted to analyze whether you can speak you are like good at communication because in the office hours if you can't explain the problem well enough mm. then it's mm. actually not good right for the students yeah so yeah. 
uh, having the knowledge, but at the same time explaining it to the students, uh, not by giving out the answers directly, but just mm. setting them on the right track is important. So mm. they were trying mm. to analyze that skill. Yeah, got it. Okay, cool. So tracking back, how was your F1 visa interview? You you got the you decided I want to go to Georgia Tech. Was it pretty much like, oh, Georgia Tech, your visa is approved or did they grill you? <laughs> uh, no, actually, it was uh, pretty much very straightforward. So I think yeah. in that case, the university name really matters because, yes, uh, yes they uh, they asked me hardly a one or two questions like, uh, where are you going? What is the purpose? And mm. uh, what do your parents do? And that's it. Like not a lot of grilling. Uh, back mm. then. University yeah. name cool. So congratulations, your visa is approved. Now, uh, I'm assuming you had two to three months, uh, depending on when you applied for it, or maybe one month or so. What did you do before flying? Uh, uh, like, how did you prepare for United States? Uh, so from a traveling perspective, I think that this was like my first uh, international trip. I'd been to Dubai, but uh, I mean, that was not a very long flight. So, and uh, actually you don't, for a, a normal a trip, you don't take like so much of stuff. So I didn't know the rules and the restrictions. So that was one thing that I actually inquired about that. Uh, what are the bag restrictions and what can you keep in the check-in and the carry-on, all of that. Mm. Also, we made a checklist among all of our friends because, and we put all the uh, utensils or any, any other items, clothing, accessories, toiletries, everything in that one uh, Excel sheet. Because if in case I forget something, wow, uh, yeah. maybe my friend might add something in that sheet. And because of which I'll remember that, okay, I should take this. So we had a common... And so these friends are not uh, your roommates. These are like normal, uh, yeah, so everyone who's people, planning to go yes. to United States. Okay. Yes. And there's a collective, like, okay, these are the things you are taking. Uh, and then you're like, oh, shit, like I forgot this one. So <laughs> it's like, okay, got it. Right. That That's very smart. I like that. Nice. Yeah. So actually okay. that helped a lot. Uh, but mm. I think one mistake I made was that uh, even between roommates, we divided our stuff because we did mm. not have like the weight capacity. So like each of us divided the utensils and all. But mm. then that is problematic when you have to go for an internship because mm. that you have to go independently and then you have to buy all the stuff again, mm. which you don't have. So yeah. it's better that you independently do things because uh, sometimes uh, your courses and the roommates courses do not match many times. So the timings might not match. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so then you have to do everything independently and you should yeah. have yeah. Yes. Right. Um, roommate is such a like big thing for me, but uh, I'll also say like sometimes when if you are a vegetarian and if your roommate doesn't like or eat meats or like they are not non, like not vegetarian, then then the the do you want them to use your utensils? Do you not want them to no. use this? This yes. could be also another thing that I've, I have come across. So I, I know that this, uh, so that's, those are the things you want to consider. But talking about roommates, what were the things that you considered while you were choosing it? Or were you like, I'm so desperate. I just need like four people, like give me something. <laughs> uh, so actually one thing was vegetarian and no smoking, no drinking. That was like a criteria. So we had an Excel sheet for oh, wow. group, again, yeah, yeah. which had like uh, columns uh, for drinking, smoking, vegetarian, mm. non-vegetarian, tick, and then that's when you can actually coordinate with people. So yeah. I just coordinated with those set of people because I think mm. those were like the main important criteria for mm. me. Uh, apart from that, I thought that, okay, I'll manage things independently. So I was not looking for anything uh, apart from that. But mm. uh, yes, those were important. Did, did you talk to them before i'm assuming yes uh, but like did you talk to them did you meet them uh, before uh, or yeah, yeah i didn't meet them because uh, they were from different states uh, yeah. in india but uh, i did talk to them on the phone and then we actually signed a lease together we uh, mm. all the utilities and all we got all the setup done uh, beforehand so yes we did coordinate with each other yes nice okay cool now you how was your first international flight experience what, what like what was how was your feeling when you were i'm assuming you flew from mumbai uh, mm -hmm. what was the feeling like was, was were you excited were you nervous were you sad like what was going through and then how oh. was that that experience right actually my flight was from pune to delhi and delhi to doha and then doha to oh. so oh, it was because like you a very took long qatar flight. okay 
Yeah. Yeah. So it it was a little stressful because it was very long. So I'd never uh, you know been in such a long journey. So it was a little uh, tiring as well, mm-hmm. and a lot mm-hmm. of layovers as well in between. But I did get like a a group of friends uh, from Delhi uh, who were also mm-hmm. going to different universities. But uh, a lot of people uh, people fly to Atlanta first, and then they fly to uh, some other cities as yeah. well. So that yeah. that's an advantage. Uh, yes. And yes, I met a few people. I still follow them on Instagram. We are still connected. <laughs> So that's nice. a good thing but yeah. Uh, yeah so it was good but very tiring yeah yeah and were you how how did you feel like were you excited before flying and then were you like what was what was going through in your head like were you did you capture that and journal it and you remember it like what was what was the process uh so i was actually very excited for the uh, fact because i was dreaming about this since like such a long time and then mm. uh, because of the deferral i was like very impatient for a year so mm. uh, i was very excited that finally it's happening the visa is done because i think back then uh, the visa situation uh, we were not getting uh, slots after the covid 19 so yeah. uh, getting a visa slot was like a victory and uh, so i was <laughs> very excited that finally i'm able to go but yeah. I, i was very nervous because of the competition and the curriculum because georgia tech mm. i knew that the competition is going to be very tough the mm. curriculum is again going to be very tough and that's what happened actually so mm. because we so how, get... how did you then how did you fought that nervousness or fear like how did you like overcome that uh so i think uh, because i thought that it it is a very long fetched dream that i had so that definitely the excitement kind of overpowered the nervousness but mm. i i thought to myself that i was well prepared like i had started lead course 6 months before uh traveling um i i although i had not mailed the professors but i was prepared that uh, maybe in the first semester i might not get a ta because that's what i had heard from uh, seniors but that's actually not true so i was quite prepared that okay i'll be able to survive but when i actually entered uh, it was a completely different ball game i feel that mm-hmm. unless and until you experience it i think in the second semester somehow i uh, started feeling comfortable but in the first mm-hmm. semester with the internship search and uh, the curriculum and the four courses uh, it was pretty hectic and uh, yeah. very difficult yes. yeah yeah so you landed in united states um went through your port of entry i'm assuming it was pretty simple uh, was it anything crazy or just straightforward no, what was your purpose yes yeah okay cool and then um is another thing that a lot of people miss out on or on prepping how would they go from airport to their apartment uh, did you had that plan already or did you do uber or like how did you get to your apartment uh right so um actually we from georgia tech we had the service wherein they have like a group of seniors and volunteers who kind mm. of provide the service so for that one to two weeks when the new incoming students are going to come they have the transportation already arranged so that mm. was quite good for me but i know friends uh, who had already taken like international uh, packs on their um, you know mobile sim cards yeah, yeah. sim card to uh, book an uber or lift so yes that mm. got it okay and how far is it from airport to uh, to your university is it like pretty far 40 minutes 35 40 minutes okay so not not that bad like chico like california like we land in san francisco most people land in san francisco it's 3 right. hour drive so oh. that's it's pretty big and most people don't plan for it so that's why i usually like to ask that and i'm assuming there are probably other universities fall under the same thing but yeah. okay so what was your first week like you landed you are like living the dream you are in atlanta you're like you know your georgia tech your dream university what did you do in the first week so first week was very exciting actually uh, because i think uh, already jet lagged uh, but at the same time uh, we had to select our courses in the first week itself so mm-hmm. as soon as i landed uh, the jet lag kind of helped because it, we had to wake up early and book the courses so mm-hmm. um, getting the courses again was a very uh, it, it was a struggle because that's that's the reason i had to take up uh, difficult courses because i did not get a seat in an easy course Mm. so because that is very competitive an easy course mm. is very competitive everybody wants to balance so mm. uh, i had to select and my and how course. do you know what is easy what is hard is it from seniors uh, yes from seniors also you can uh, visit the website and check the actual uh, curriculum and the kind of assignments that they have uh, mm. so that will and a lot of universities have uh, a sort of specific website uh, wherein they mention the level of difficulty for different courses oh yes yeah yeah yes. yeah yep. so yeah. Uh, that also helps 
so uh, that was one thing yeah. that we did for sure after coming and the rest was like just setting up the uh, apartment like overall uh, buying furniture and uh, utilities and all of that mm. so yeah. yeah initially it was difficult but uh, we managed you managed nice cool was there any specific like culture shocks you faced through you were like this is so different from india or like things like like for me like the big one was Uh, pedestrians are given such a big importance yeah <laughs> so, like, i felt like i was on the traffic signal and the red light happened and every everybody or even on the crosswalk and the stop sign is there everybody is waiting i'm like oh wow this is this is so different <laughs> but, but what, was there anything for you that you felt like different or culture shock that doesn't have to be just culture shock yeah but i think uh, within the campus i felt that because everybody was extremely punctual extremely disciplined so mm. you can't get uh, you can't be late to classes which is yeah. uh, it, it's we take it very conveniently um, in india but it we can't take it that uh, lightly here because uh, also for deadlines the assignments and exams even if you submit a minute late it's not acceptable so that was one thing that punctuality discipline was definitely one thing that it's taken so seriously and mm. even for that matter plagiarism was taken so seriously at georgia tech so uh, it's like a uh, people get kicked out of the course a lot of time people get kicked out of the university as well yeah so yeah. yes so uh, that is very strict yeah yes yeah yeah no 100% and i i think most universities now do in orientation they emphasize a lot on plagiarism because i think it might be the cultural thing for other you know in countries not just necessarily india like it's okay to <clears throat> maybe plagiarize a little bit but mm. in america it's definitely like a no no you could get suspended from universities from course and potentially like yeah even like you could deportation most likely not but if you are suspended or barred from the universities then you'll have to find something else and it can get very crazy so yes. so yeah don't plagiarize and uh how many out of 10 were core courses and how many electives do you have so you have to take five core courses uh, for mm-hmm. your specialization and five can nice. be any electives that you want to choose nice okay um did you uh, knowing you now i feel like you were very intentional and thought out so did you already knew how you want to design your master's course or did you like decided when you went there so i actually that that was one thing that i had to decide after coming to the us because i i didn't have uh, seniors at georgia tech i had seniors who had mm. done masters so they could tell me like in general uh, things that are required for a masters degree but from yeah. georgia tech specific things i did not know a lot of things actually mm-hmm. so uh, we used to discuss after coming to the us we discussed with a lot of seniors i contacted mm-hmm. through friends and that's when i realized that okay um, yeah but uh, the despite deciding everything what happens is the uh, at 6 am in the morning everyone tries to first choose the uh, easy courses and they want to co- uh, choose also the core courses as well so yeah. and a lot of people do machine learning specialization uh, at georgia tech so mm. that's why it is quite competitive and that's mm. why i had to take like uh, three difficult and one easy course in the first semester itself so mm. and while i was doing an internship search so it was very crazy yeah yeah and but you did end up did you end up finding an internship in the first semester itself or did was it yes. second semester yes wow so you did manage all of that that's that's awesome um and also for people who don't know what we are talking about when when in united states it's not like how we have it in india where uh, the course system is like decided for you like every semester you are these are the courses you will get you get to pick what you want to do so you like it's just like going to a restaurant and you decide like all right it's not a thali it is a la carte <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. how i like to explain so uh, yeah and that's that's a common th- theme that i've heard is like it, enrollments open you decide but then because most people are also trying to get Uh, certain courses you there's a competition over there uh, of which one who will get what because there's a limit per class um, maybe georgia tech is, i'm assuming 50 40 what is the limit per class uh some courses have like 
50 60 but some right. courses actually also include uh, bachelor students they do allow so in that case the limit is higher then your competition yeah. is not just masters correct yeah 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 okay how was your campus life like how is georgia tech's campus life is it good is it fun what is it yeah. like it's actually very lively so there are a lot of fests that are happening consistently mm. like even the indian fests uh, they have holi diwali garba all of those events uh, mm. at the same time they have a lot of games uh, that are there mostly soccer and like football games are like consistently happening there are tournaments and you can definitely um, go buy tickets and it, it's a lot of fun mm. because the mm. ambience and the environment is amazing and uh, some of the other day like every other day you'll have like free food on campus you'll have some <laughs> event uh, that is going yeah. on so it's very lively yeah. Uh, yeah. they also took us to field trips like they we went to georgia aquarium once uh, mm. which is like one of the largest aquariums um, in the united states and then they took us to six flags in the last semester as well so that's yeah, awesome like, six flags is like a sl world for people who are yes. in mumbai <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but yes uh, that's the, and another thing that i want to hone in also is campus there is so much a lot of these universities have to offer but a lot of people just stay in their apartment or mm. they stay in their own community uh, and they don't explore um, yeah. so like i think you are here to explore the culture to explore all these experiences so you should not just stay where you are and you should like go out and explore because it is meant that's where you will build your network that's where you'll meet yeah. your friends and all of that so um anyway i just wanted to throw in there that that as well um so i mean we talked about on campus jobs uh tara is definitely one uh, are there any other on campus jobs uh so actually at georgia tech people don't especially in cs i have not seen people do on campus jobs uh they, yeah there are other fields uh, that do dining or live uh, they work in the library but for mm. cs students i have not seen a lot of people do on campus it's either ta or ra that they do um because the four courses that you have to take it takes up so much yeah, so time much, of yours yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah and i think the on campus jobs uh, like dining can be very stressful physically yeah. then it's yeah. it's very difficult for you to come back and study yes and, yeah. yeah yeah no 100% and uh, it's not just the four course but then you also have to dedicate time to do the job search as well or internship yes. search so yes. uh, if you are like putting your 20 hours in the labor um, you're not going to have like a lot of creative energy and all of that so um yeah. cool what what is the typical like uh, if you talk about the economics of uh, tara uh, what is like what is the stipend you get uh, roughly range and then i'm right. assuming it's the entire tuition fees and health insurance yes so health insurance you have to pay uh, okay. the tuition is waived off and you get allowed around 1000 to 1100 depending upon so in the second year they increased it in the first year initially it is 1000 so hmm. uh, that was quite good enough for me to manage my uh, expenses because i was sharing a room as well hmm. so hmm. that helped me manage uh, quite well what what's the cost of living uh, if uh, we have to talk about uh, like rent and all of that so it's around uh, 1000 to 1100 per room if you want to take it independently but wow. so around 2200 was the rent for our two bed two bath apartment and mm. we were four girls living in the apartment so mm. i paid 550 mm. and 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 then i'm assuming utilities and living exp- like yes. food and all of that is it roughly assuming 1000 to 1200 is that roughly yes, the total number? was 1000 to 1200 for me so around yeah. 150 to 200 was utilities and another 200 to 300 uh, was um, you know the entertainment that you want or maybe some movies or uh, groceries and all of that so yes yeah yeah how how safe is, safe is that because you know people are concerned about it so it's actually not that safe frankly mm. but if you see the campus it's very safe because mm. there is a uh, patrolling happening uh, every now and then uh, within the campus and the campus is huge and if you uh, live uh, like very close to the campus it's quite safe it's not that uh, okay. like yeah but uh, there so are let's certain... say i'm i'm a junior i'm planning to uh, come to georgia tech i'm like devashri uh, like what should i do like wh- which w- what areas would you recommend to go uh, how can like what tip uh, or advice would you give me to be safe uh, in georgia tech right so uh, 
uh, firstly connect to your seniors as well as uh, because that will they'll tell you the apartments that are in safer places so there are several mm. apartments actually but uh, and they are spread across the uh, it's like a circular campus wherein they are spread across the circular campus but mm. the ones that are closer to the campus they are relatively very safe because mm. uh, it's it's like a very uh, it's not a definite uh, markation that they have right demarcation that they yeah. have for the campus so the gt right. uh, yeah the gt uh, patrolling that is happening it also happens through those apartments so mm -hmm. then that is definitely safe yeah yeah and another thing i would add to is like don't go by yourself in the evening um oh, yes. like if it is dark like uh, stay in the large groups or like at least three or four so that way because if you are in a bigger group people will not try to mess with you versus if you are yeah. like alone it's you are like an easy target for someone so yes. um, things like that i would like also and that there, there is at least in chico i would recommend people like this street or this lane don't go after like this time because there are it's not safe so i'm right. assuming in georgia tech also there will be areas where people will recommend like don't go there ever by yourself right. or uh, in the night or after this time because it's not safe so so listen yeah. to your seniors because they have been there and they know what to do so cool right. okay uh now let's uh, obviously you got the internship what is uh, what are the different roles people can get if you do the masters in computer science what have you seen obviously you are engineer software engineer but what are other roles people have gotten uh so people have gotten a lot of uh things related to data especially so data mm. engineering data and an an analyst uh then um they also have um roles like technical program manager uh product mm. managers as well so people have transitioned uh, a lot of people uh, who are good at research they've applied for applied scientist uh, as well they have applied for ml engineers so uh, so but even if i good. did masters in computer science at georgia tech i yes. could transit i would transit i i am able to transition into tpm or product manager or something yes. like that Yes. Uh, and i'm saying that because i've also done it i did masters in computer science and i went from right. there to pro project manager technical project manager um and i didn't know like because georgia it sounded like georgia tech is very heavy tech course versus management course so i'm assuming they might have taken some elective courses to supplement yes. that product management kind of things yes. yeah okay so yeah i'm not sure about the uh, if they have like any uh, a specialization for that specifically but there mm, are a lot yeah, of like yeah. for sure that right. they can take up yes yeah same uh, in my universities we didn't i don't have like mem or anything like that so mm -hmm. what i did is i took my core courses and then i took like an entrepreneurship and then there was an another course which is very similar it's like it was a project management 101 then software engineering with innovation it's very focused on product management backlog like management and road mapping and all of those so uh, so those are the skills i learned as a product manager program manager and then implemented it so uh, yeah. yeah cool and how if you were to like give a stat how many from your batch you feel like have gotten internships and then full time job uh so majority of the people started applying in the first semester so like hmm. i think 50% of the people had internships in the first semester itself what which is a huge number but yeah. yes we were very well prepared and the people so, remaining okay. uh, let's clarify this as well uh, is it 50% is it because it's a georgia tech brand or is it because they are well prepared uh i think it both are interrelated uh, hmm. so georgia tech brand is not for job placements but it is because people who are well prepared who come from good universities who have a good technical strong background they join the university so i think mm. it's interlinked but the brand is I, I don't think because the career fair was not very useful from uh, uh getting jobs or internships because a lot of people everyone literally goes to the career fair just mm. in case there's like one or two startups who really love your project and they are really interested in your research work they might like hire you there and then but like the big tech companies they definitely have to apply through the normal process uh, if mm. you apply via referral that would be great like mm. a lot of people at georgia tech they applied uh, to meta i remember and a lot of people got placed in meta but i think mm. in that year a lot of people interned at meta so uh, yeah. so it's yeah. from all universities i think
right 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 okay uh, so uh, fifth, so it's it's not necessarily just the brand that is getting you it's not like if you have the brand and you don't do any of the hard work uh, you will get the job it's like brand but then you also have to hustle and work hard to actually yes. get the interview calls and all of that uh, okay so you said 50% got it in the first semester and then i'm assuming rest is it all 100% or like 30 uh, 40% exactly. so, yeah around 80 to 90% people did get internships but there hmm. were some people who were either interested in research or the people who didn't get a research uh, didn't get any internship they definitely uh, tried doing research um, under professors during the summer semester because they didn't want to take up courses because they wanted to extend their masters so that's the reason they took up research so mm. that is also one thing that you can do uh, mm. but yeah 80% of the people are very well prepared i feel so they definitely get internships yes nice and is it the same stat for full time job especially uh, so, even when this is like the job market was tough yeah so uh, not till december because a lot of people pre uh, like postponed their uh, masters hmm. up to may yeah. so a lot of people do graduate in december in one and a half years but uh, they did postpone but by may like 70 80% people definitely had jobs uh, from hmm. tech not in top tech maybe because not in the companies that they'd already worked in india but definitely some kind of job they definitely had they did not mm. have to you know go uh, through any consultancies or anything else they right had yeah jobs. yeah that's awesome i know we are going to do like a separate video this one was obviously all focused on georgia tech and your journey till georgia tech um and you obviously got the internship at walmart with the four hard courses you are like mind blowing i love that uh, it's so yeah. awesome and then you got the internship you converted that internship and but you were still not sure if your internship was going to get converted so you yeah. were applying to other positions and other yes. companies and so I'm, I'm excited to deep dive in that one too but uh, let me ask you this uh, after like you know you've gone through completed your masters etc what are some of the like hard truths which are like hard to digest for international students um, who are coming like how can someone like mentally because i think a lot of it is mental preparation than than like an actual tactical preparation so what are some of those because now that you've gone through entire journey uh, i think from technical perspective you should be really well prepared based on the specialization so uh, you can complete all the prerequisite courses uh, before mm -hmm. coming for a master's degree uh, so in my case like for machine learning i had already completed the andrew ng the basic set of courses that are recommended for machine learning because the machine learning level is also quite high at the universities so at mm -hmm. least the basics should be very clear the fundamentals mm -hmm. should be clear uh, second thing is uh, of course to get jobs in my field definitely lead code is very important so i started doing lead code and yeah. uh, computer programming uh, six months before because it takes time it's not something mm -hmm. that you can learn overnight it initially mm -hmm. takes time and then as soon as you step in the us all you have to do is start applying and uh, just go appear for interviews because shortlisting calls you get like very few percentage of the calls they actually uh, you get for shortlisting uh, mm -hmm. because you apply for like 500 uh, applications and then you get hardly 3 4 uh, shortlisting mm -hmm. calls out of mm -hmm. which again um, not everything gets converted so you should be very well prepared for sure yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah and i love the fact you didn't mention it right now but i know you had told me before when we were talking a uh, couple of the mental mindset model that you had like don't focus on your like comparison mm -hmm. but focus on yes. yourself which yes. was uh, do you want to share that too yes so actually in india if you see uh, a lot of things are like uh, the university ranking is directly proportional to the placements Mm. So in India, I saw that at Georgia Tech, a lot of people, uh, as because they were from IIT and NIT and all, they'd already worked in the top tech companies. So mm. they'd already uh, done lead code like thousand times already. So they didn't have to prepare like I used to prepare before an interview. They were mm. quite chilled out because they already it was in their system. It was a muscle memory that they used to you know code in that specific manner. Even mm. the algorithms, the assignments that they approached. The problem solving skill that they had was very different i couldn't even think of that approach in the first semester and mm. they you know solved the entire assignment so and their level of uh, working under stress was amazing like they can mm. work a lot under stress so if you tell them that tomorrow you have an interview they're already prepared 
Mm. But in my case, I needed like a week to prepare for an interview. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a static difference. Uh, yeah. So that was one skill that I learned. That you know, you uh, I started living with them literally, right? In the even in mm. the apartment. So I learned yeah. how they prepared. Uh, they did not stress too much as well. So it's very. So how important. how did they? What 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 was it so different that like what did you learn? Like how did you, what what is it that that you started doing that you were not doing before? So I think I stopped comparing myself for sure with them mm. because mm. in uh, India, if you see the placements are very university specific, but mm. here if you see you have to apply in an open pool on LinkedIn where the competition mm. is not your university but the competition is all the master students in the US. So it's very mm. important to stop comparing yourself because there are a luck is I think one small percentage that is definitely a factor that contributes. So you can't mm. keep comparing and regretting about the fact that a friend of yours got an internship but you did not. You have mm. to focus on your personal development. I think it's very easy to say but it's very difficult to implement. But yeah. you have to do that or else. Uh, yes. Yeah. You will be crushed mentally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, let me ask you also this uh, what are like who is it georgia tech for and who is it not for like instead of doing pros and cons maybe yeah. like that's a better way like sh- like is georgia tech for me would what would you say in that case like what what are who should go for it who should not go for it so uh, one thing is definitely uh, you should be mentally prepared that the curriculum is going to be tough for sure mm. Um, also, I think it really is a very subjective uh, thing because for machine learning, definitely Georgia Tech has amazing curriculum. But I had a few roommates and friends who were pursuing computer graphics. And uh, the although the website mentioned several courses about computer graphics, but the website was outdated and they did not have those courses. So mm-hmm. it's very it's specific to the specialization that you want to pursue. So mm-hmm. like, for example, uh, New York is known for fashion and finance and all of that. So uh, different universities have irrespective of the ranking they have their own uh, specific thing that they are good at they uh, i mean it, it's very selective especially machine learning is good at cmu or georgia tech or stanford so i think uh, you should first look at the course and then try to figure out if that university is for you or not so not yeah. every university is good or bad yes i love it yeah no 100% i i agree um, everything what you said like it's it's important to know have a clarity where you want to go and then see if that university can get you where you want to go but i think most people forget where they want to go and they just focus on brand and ranking and mm-hmm. then, then try to match where they want to go but uh, yeah yeah cool what's the one piece of advice would you give to an aspiring student like they are coming i'm an international student like what what are some of the tips and tricks uh, not tricks but like tip things which you would recommend to me so like as we mentioned all the points firstly apply uh, for ta or an ra before coming male professors be mm. very prepared uh, mm. try to build a strong alumni network because that really mm. helps uh, not only uh, in mailing professors but also in course selection also in the small doubts that you might have across the journey Uh, a person who has actually witnessed that um, in the same university can tell you much better so mm-hmm. connect to people on linkedin for sure uh, start preparing for your degree like uh, in my case it was lead code but it can be any other thing all the prerequisite courses be very prepared before coming to a country like us because the competition is going to be huge and be mentally prepared don't compare yourself with your peers your friends mm-hmm. uh, because that is not at all healthy for sure Yes. um i think and as i mentioned roi is very important so at least i considered that for sure so consider mm. that factor uh, before coming to the us for sure mm. <laughs> uh, so i think for phd students i feel that uh, they should not go based on the ranking of the university they should consider the professor because mm. if you're interested in research like in phd i have had friends who like they always used to say that their uh, the professor is like their spouse they talk to their uh, professors much more than they talk to their uh, parents or anyone else yes. so i think uh, they should definitely consider the professor and the kind of research that he's doing than the ranking mm. that does not mm. matter in that case mm. uh, for sure uh, secondly i feel that when you're applying uh, you have just one opportunity to apply and uh, so definitely take like higher risk and apply for more universities because mm. even if you fail if you don't get in it's okay but uh, i think living with that regret that you did not apply 
and then what if uh, some other person with your profile similar to yours gets in you'll have that regret yeah. that you didn't even try for it yes so yeah definitely this apply to like even life in general i i feel yes. like you should you should just do what you your heart desires otherwise you will live with the regret and on your deathbed you'll be like i wish i would have done that and be very independent i feel that as i mentioned even about the utensils or anything be prepared to do everything independently made be cooking cleaning and managing all the daily activities uh, mm-hmm. your uh, banking your finances everything so be prepared from a holistic perspective that you have to do it independently if you have help that's great but then don't expect that you'll have help throughout the journey because that's very rare yes yeah yeah i love it i love it that was so good i am so excited to bring you back because um you are like such a wealth of information and i'm sorry i i made you stay so long i know i told you like an hour but we just kept going because you, you have so much information and all the knowledge that you share is very very valuable but i can't wait to bring you back until our next one keep smiling and keep hustling nice awesome also guys check out her instagram i'm her fan <laughs> thank nice. you cool